If you want to make crazy profits in crypto, you have to keep your coins for a long time. But when the market crashes, it's really hard to fight the urge to sell. What if we could lock our crypto in a smart contract for a predetermined duration? That way, we would be guaranteed to hold our crypto for a long time regardless of our emotional state. That's what we will do in this video. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. So first, you will have to write your time of smart contract and then you will deploy it to the blockchain. When we deploy it, you will specify who is the owner of the time lock that will be the person that can receive the funds in the future. Then after the deployment, you will deposit your asset in the time lock contract. So you will be able to deposit Ether and also yes, 20 tokens. Then after the expiration of the time lock, you will be able to withdraw your crypto from the time lock contract. And that's the end of the process. At any time, if you try to withdraw your crypto before the end of the time lock, it's not going to work. All right, so let's see the strategy code of a time lock contract. So this is the GitHub repo of it, the blocks. I created a trough project and we'll go inside the contracts folder inside timelock.sol. All right, so let's scroll down. So first I import the ERS20 interface from OpenZipLink. Then we define the time lock contract. So here I define the duration of the time lock. This is hard coded in the contract. Then we have the end date that will be computed when we deploy the contract, then the address of the owner. And so here we have our constructor. So that's the function that will be called when we first deploy our time lock contract. So we specify who is the owner of the time lock. This will be the address that can receive the crypto store inside. Then we calculate the end date for the time lock. So block.timestamp, this is the current timestamp plus the duration that we had coded before. And we also initialize the owner variable based on the argument we provided to the constructor. Then we have two functions to deposit our crypto on the time log. First, a deposit function to deposit some ES20 token, specify the address of the token, the amount we want to deposit. Then we build a pointer to the ES20 smart contract. We call the transfer from function. Here, MSG sender, so that's the sender of the transaction. We're going to send tokens from this address to the address of the smart contract and for the amount specified in the argument. After, in order to be able to receive some ether, we created a receive function. And we just need to define a signature with an empty body. Just like this, we can receive some ether. And finally, we have the withdraw function. That's the function to withdraw our crypto after the end of the time lock. So we specify the address of the token, the amount, and first a couple of sanity checks. So first we need to make sure that the sender of the transaction is the owner of the time lock. Then we need to make sure that we are after the end of the time lock. And after, if the address of the token is the null address, so that's just a convention we will use to mean that we want to withdraw ether. So here that means we will send some ether to the owner address for this amount. Otherwise, if this is not the null address for the token, that means this is a transfer of ES20 token. And so that's how we are going to do the transfer. Once you deploy a smart contract to the blockchain, it's not possible to modify its code. So before, it's very important to test your smart contract to make sure that everything is fine. So here in the test folder, I define a test file, timelock.js. So let's see how it works. So first I import a couple of helper from the open Zipling test helper library. This is going to help us to do our test more easily. Then we are going to import two JavaScript objects that represent our smart contract. This is provided by the Truffle framework. Then here we define a contract block. So in Truffle, when you define a test, everything needs to be a contract block. Accounts here, this is an array of addresses that we can use in our test. We define a couple of variables here. Then we extract some addresses from the accounts array, the deployer of the time lock, the owner. So the deployer and the owner don't have to be the same address. And then another address we will use in the test. So before our test, we will deploy our smart contract. We deploy our time lock, we specify the owner. 
and we're also going to deploy a mock token that we're going to use just in our test then we have the definition of our test here so we define the amount of ether and token that will lock in the time lock then we define a couple of variable then we are going to send some assets to the time lock so here we are going to send some ether after we are going to send an ERC20 token, we need to approve before we call the deposit function because inside the deposit function, we are using the transfer from function. This is the standard way of sending tokens to a smart contract. And after we are going to run our first assertion. So in our assertion, we are going to test that a variable has a certain value. And if this is the case, the test passes. Otherwise, the test will fail. So here we will get the ether balance and the token balance for the time lock contract and after we will assert that these are the correct amount after we will use the helper expect revert of open zippling test helper and this is to test the unhappy pass when we will trigger a require statement so we will try to withdraw our token but from a bad address which is not the owner and the error message that we're expecting is only owner and then the other required we need to test is what if this time we try to withdraw from the owner, so this is correct, but we do it too early because we are supposed to wait one year before we withdraw our assets. So in this case, the error message we expect is too early. All right, then we continue and we want to test the happy pass, but the problem is that we will have to wait one year. So obviously we're not going to do this, but fortunately there is a helper in the OpenZeppling test helper library that allow you to manipulate the time on our local test blockchain. So for that, we're gonna use time.increase and after we specify the duration to increase. And for that, we can also use some predefined constant in the time object, time.duration.years, and we want one year. And after we will call the withdraw function again. So first we withdraw the ether. And for that, we need to specify the null address. So we have another constant defined by the OpenZeppling test helper library. Here, the zero address. Then we specify the ether amount the from address after we also withdraw our token and after we are ready to do our assertion so we get the ether and token balance for the time lock contract we also get the ether and token balance for the owner address and after we run our assertions so first we check that there is no crypto left on the time lock contract here, contract ether balance and contract token balance. This is some instances of bn.js. This is a JavaScript library to manipulate big numbers that cannot be represented in native JavaScript number. And to do the comparison easily, we transform this object into a string. That's how we do the comparison. And after, we are going to make sure that the owner has received its token. And finally, we are going to check that the owner receive its balance. So it's a little bit more complicated to test for the ether balance of the owner address. That's because in Truffle, when you run your test, each of the address provided comes with 100 fake ether already pre-founded. So we started with 100 ether, then we sent one of these ether to the time lock contract and when we call the deposit function, so we sent one ether to the time lock contract before, so we are at 99 ether. And then when you call withdraw, we got this ether back, so we are supposed to have 100 ether, but because we also call the withdraw function twice, we also spend some ether in gas fee, so we don't have exactly 100 ether, but we have 99 something. So in order to do our assertion, I used a trick. First of all, the length of our number is supposed to be 20, so we have 18 decimal plus two digit for 99. Then if we extract the first two digit of our number, it should be 99. So this is a hack to test the ether balance in this case. There are a couple of improvements that we can make. For example, we could add support for ERC721 tokens. We could also add some logic to check that a certain profit was made before withdrawing our tokens. Another important thing to know is that OpenZeppling, a library for Solidity, already has its own implementation for time lock. 
The benefit of using the implementation of OpenZipLink is that the code has been audited which lowers the risk of security vulnerability in your smart contract. But you lose in flexibility, so it's a trade-off. The next step once you have written and tested your smart contract is to deploy it. And for this, you can watch this other video. The instructions are valid not only for Binance Smart Chain but also any EVM compatible blockchain. I'll see you there.